there's a new zero day on Android phones. So, John, speaking of vulnerabilities, uh, what do you have for us today? I, I have an interesting one, and it's interesting only in the news coverage of it, I think, more than the actual vulnerability. It, it, it's, it seems to be the theme uh, lately that we, it, we find zero days and they make a big splash, but the actual implementation or the actual exploitation of them is probably not quite as easy as the press tends to make it out. Um, in, in this case, we have Android, which is, you know, tends to have zero days and on a regular basis. So do apples and everything else. But, you know, not to be negative on any of it, it's, it's the zero day is going to happen. Uh, this particular issue actually, um, and I'm trying to somewhat to be sensitive to it, but it, it's, it was a vulnerability that was found in Qualcomm chipsets and almost a year ago. Um, and it's just slowly made its way. Uh, when you talk a chipset vulnerability, it takes a long time to actually incorporate that into an operating system update or even a firmware update. So, so in this particular case, there was a vulnerability, was identified, was patched early in January, which was great, and they started pushing it out. Well, it made the news a couple of weeks ago that there's a zero day and that if you have an Android phone that's not patched with uh, what they call the security patch level or SPL of 2021-0101, you would, or I think maybe 0105 actually, but regardless, you would have to have, uh, you know, or be susceptible to this zero day. And I kind of want to explain <laughs> the zero day a little bit because so basically, if the phone itself was connected to a physical computer, unmonitored, somebody had access to it, they could actually corrupt the memory. And um, if you requested like a large bit of data from it or, or sent a transmitted large bit of data, you could actually cause this memory corruption, which could then in turn lead to information disclosure or remote command execution. So we're not talking something that's going to be a drive by, you know, hey, I got you know, sitting in a Starbucks or wherever, you know, getting my coffee and all of a sudden my phone's hacked. It, it's not quite that simple an exploit. And that's why I said it made a lot of press, a lot of news, but you know, from a from a vulnerability perspective, it's kind of on the on the on the iffy side. But I, I did think it was an opportunity here, since I was gonna be on threat track when this all coming up, is to actually talk about one of the things that, you know, we talk about all the time on this show is upgrading your devices. You know, we, you know, you think about your cell phones, you know, and, and I'm preaching to the choir. I know guys, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, know you, you talk about these phones, you know, you got to keep them up to date. And, but people don't always necessarily know when their devices are up to date. And so I think that that's a question that, you know, we, 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 I don't want to say gloss over, but we, we don't talk about so much. So, th again, this was an issue that was part of that SPL 2021-0101 or 0105. I, details confuse me a little bit. But the if you look at your Android phone, if you go into the settings and info, you'll actually see, if you do the about, you'll actually see what patch level. It'll actually tell you the security patch level. And, and in that same place, you can see, you know, what your, um, you know, if you need to update. Um, if you have a Samsung phone as well, which I know there's a lot of Samsung phones out there, is there's also what they call an SMR. So you'll see the security patch level. You also see an SMR. The SMR is Samsung's kind of add-on vulnerabilities because each hardware sometimes has their own vulnerabilities that are specific to that particular piece of hardware. And so, um, you know, I just it's things you want to look at when you're looking at your device. Make sure that they're on, you know, for example, I think we're taping this in March. So, you know, you want to make sure you're trying like to be in the December, January timeframe or newer patches. Same thing with your Apple phones. You know, you want to make sure that you're on 14.4.2 uh, or later probably at this juncture. And so, you know, it's, it, it's just things that, you know, we, we tend to talk about, you know, updating it, but to circle back, <laughs> it's a real long-winded here, but to circle back, is that this particular vulnerability was patched in January. So if your device is updated, it's no problem. E even though it's not that big an issue, you know, you're, you're, you're still something 
you know, you're not going to have to be concerned about if you're keeping up your patches. I have a, a question that you're probably not going to be able to answer, but I'd love to hear your answer because you have very sure. good answers, John, for a lot of things, especially Android. Um, I mean, there are so many different flavors of Android out there, right, as far as the hardware. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of software releases, but, you know, you can get free Android burner phones, right, that are the hardware is crap, but gets the job done, right? Um, so what do you have to say? Because I know that Google kind of gave every hardware vendor, like, some mandatory that their phones need to be upgradable, or at least the security patches need to be available for three years, I think, or I, I know they had set some kind of a date. Um, right. But what do we, like, what do you suggest people who have a phone, but they're not ready to switch, but they can no longer get updates for their phone because it's reached the maximum of, you know, the hardware uh, well, whatever there, requirements. There's a lot, <laughs> we got to load the questions up today. <laughs> Throw it out, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I tell you, it, it, it's an interesting challenge because it, depending on the manufacturer, like, for example, Samsung has said they're going to support their devices, at least at the hardware level, for four years now for, for the flagships. And that's the key is you got to start thinking of flagship okay. models. So all those, you know, vendors come out with, you know, a whole bunch of device models in any given year, but they have things they call flagships. And those flagships are the ones that are going to get the patches the earliest, the fastest, and, and probably right. the, the longest. Um, we tend to say, like you said, Google has said three years. I think you're pretty safe if you have a device that's three years or newer. Um, but honestly, if you're concerned about security, um, it's hard for me to say this because it's obviously a, a, a personal commitment, a personal decision. Any device that's older than three years, especially on the Android side, is probably less secure. I mean, and that's and I hate yeah. to say it that way, um, but it's one of those things that maybe you know you may want to think about getting a new phone. Um, only do things, you know. And again, it's hard to it's hard to say. Most of the vulnerabilities come about because of physical access. Right. Okay. I mean, that's that. It, it, so so as long as you're not letting your phone out of your sight, you're not letting people, you know, you're less of a risk. Um, as long as you're not getting on um, Wi-Fi hotspots, you know, that are not, you know, you know, something you own, <laughs> something you're secure, yeah. you're less of a risk. And, and, and as long as, you know, you're not clicking on links that you get texted to you or, you know, or go to strange websites, your, your chances of being uh, exploited are fairly small, but but you do have to think about it that you're not getting patches. So if there is a zero day, a real big zero day, um, you may you may be susceptible. Um, and so I, I like I said, I, I usually tell my friends that you know if you have a device older than three or four years, you probably need to be looking for a new one. No, another way to think about it is like thinking about getting a car, for example. So, like, when you think about the car, you think about safety features that it has or other features that it has. And as newer cars come out, there's, like, better features and people want to upgrade their vehicle or they, like, lease it. So, like, I think in certain spaces, even though, like, it's a big commitment, in general, people are, like, choosy and they want to make sure that they get, like, the best of the crop. And I think mm -hmm. if you're thinking, like, uh, for or if your phone as your connection to the world, which I think most of our phones are now, you know, we do so much with them, you should probably be thinking that security is an important aspect of that. And you should probably make sure that you're picking the best phone model to meet your security needs as well. Um, just like you would pick, you know, the best car with the, mo the best safety features or something like that. So I know that's not the right answer for everyone uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but that's another way to think about this question that maybe, you know, is a parallel to something else that we do frequently, like buying a car and looking for the no. safety features and, make, and making sure we upgrade and making sure we follow the recall processes and things like that. That's a great answer. I think that you guys covered both, both sides of the coin, so it was perfect. Stan's idea is like, yeah, just when it's time, it's time. Just get something, the most powerful thing you can afford. Um, you know, to keep it safe. And if you can't, like John said, just make sure that you're not using your phone to get into your bank account. Make sure you're not hopping on 
the cafe Wi-Fi or hotel Wi-Fi. Just keep those things in mind until you're ready to upgrade. So at least you have something you can do to kind of set yourself aside uh, and be a little more secure by not exposing yourself.